Welcome to Living Hope. In today's message, Raising Lazarus, Dr. McLuhan teaches that God is still raising the dead to physical life and eternal life. After Jesus opened the eyes of the blind man in Jerusalem, the religious leaders made it unsafe for Jesus and his disciples to stay in the city. He withdrew to a lonely oasis called Bethany beyond the Jordan. This oasis is located in the country of Jordan across the river from Jericho, the ancient city of Jericho. And shortly after this delightful site was opened, I had the privilege of visiting it. It is where Elijah was translated to heaven and caught up in that chariot of fire. And it is where Jesus was baptized. And while Jesus was staying there, one of his good friends passed away and was buried. A resurrection is a prominent theme in the Bible, resurrection from the dead, that is. There are more than 10 stories of people who have been raised back to life from passing away prematurely. And right here, from right here in Hampton Roads, as far away as China, I have met with people who have been raised from the dead and people who have stories to tell about how folks they prayed for came back to life. I'm not talking about near-death experiences. I'm talking about people who actually died. <clears throat> uh, you never know when you might, might need the message that you are hearing today. And so today, an option is being presented to you to raise the dead. If you come across an accident where someone's life is at stake, just speak life. Someone you know is given a terminal diagnosis, speak life. Jesus taught that his followers to live. Jesus taught his followers how to live a supernatural life. He empowered them in his words to proclaim the kingdom of heaven, to heal the sick, to raise the dead, to cleanse the leper, and to cast out demons. Matthew chapter 10, verse 7 and 8. Those were the fundamental things that Jesus said his followers were to be about. And in John chapter 10 or 11, we find the story of how Lazarus was raised back to life. John chapter 11 and verse 1, now a certain man was ill, Lazarus of Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. Bethany is located just over the Mount of Olives. Bethany gleams beautifully in the rising sun as the light shines upon those sandstone homes. It really is a delightful place to visit. Travelers were always so grateful to reach the safety of Bethany after their hot and dangerous journey up through the Judean desert and come into the safety of the town. John reminds us that it was Mary who anointed the Lord with ointment and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was ill. John chapter 11 and verse 2. And after Lazarus fell ill, his sister sent a message to Jesus saying, Lord, he whom you love is ill. What a tender message that was. John chapter 11 and verse 2. Jesus had an unusual response to this message. This is what he said to his disciples. This, this illness does not lead to death. It is for the glory of God so that the Son of God may be glorified through it. John chapter 11 verse 4. You heard that sentence, I wonder what would go through your mind. What in the world is Jesus talking about? And sometimes God takes us through painful experiences so that through our lives, the glory of God can be seen in others. Have you ever had an encounter where you just said, glory, glory, glory? You saw something you'd never seen before. You understood that through this person, God had revealed himself. That's what this story is all about. John wrote that Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. So when he heard that Lazarus was ill, he stayed two days longer in the place where he was. John chapter 11, verse 5 and 6. Uh, for how many of you, that just doesn't make any sense. When you hear somebody's ill, you get in your car and you go right away. You make a phone call, you seek to reach out. 
<laughs> Whenever Jesus delays, it is for a larger purpose that is usually not immediately obvious. How many of you facing a delay right now? You thought God should have acted by now. You thought God should have done something. So often we feel that way. If you feel that you are experiencing a divine delay, be encouraged because God is working on your behalf. In time, the purpose of the delay will be made clear, will be revealed to you. And you can say, man, I had no idea what God was doing. And then the light went on and you figured it out. May God turn a light on for you today as circumstances become clearer over time about the hand of God in your life. After a while, Jesus said to the disciples, let's go again to Galilee or to Judea. Our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I go to awaken him. <clears throat> John chapter 1, uh, chapter 11, verse 11, and now again another unusual statement. And the disciples responded, responded to Jesus by saying, Lord, if he has fallen asleep, he will recover. And no doubt they're thinking he's unconscious <clears throat> in a coma or something has come over him. John chapter 11 <clears throat> and verse 12. <clears throat> Jesus spoke of his death, but the disciples thought that Lazarus was in a deep sleep. And so he says to them plainly, you've ever needed Jesus to tell you something plainly? Lazarus has died, and for your sake, I'm glad I was not there. This is the third unusual statement in the story. But let us go that you may what? Believe. Let us go to him. And once again, Jesus and the disciples traveled across the river, going back to the ancient town of Jericho, some think the oldest town in the world, Wall Town, and winding up that winding desert way through the Judean desert to the town of Bethany. John records, when Jesus came, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. John chapter 11 and verse 17. Now, people who die in the Middle East are usually buried within 24 hours. Have you ever noticed that on the news? You hear somebody passed and then you see somebody carrying the person to be buried. This practice continues in many cultures, especially where there's no refrigeration. But there was another ancient custom that the people believed in. For three full days, people held on to the hope that their loved one might somehow miraculously revive and come back to life again. And so... In those days, and still in many places, a person was not certified to be deceased until they had been in the tomb for three days. This is why the Bible is very clear that Jesus was in the grave three days and three nights and exceeded that uh, three-day period of time by doing so. Jesus was certified to be legally dead. John observes that Bethany was near Jerusalem, about two miles off, you can always see uh, the Mount of Olives from the city, and then over the hill lies the city. And many of the Jews had come to Martha and to Mary to console them concerning their brother. In the Gospel of John, uh, Jews is a special definition related to leaders. The leaders came. So there were leaders who came, relatives, but this is a prominent family, so many leaders came as well. John chapter 11, verse 18 and 19. Now, usually when we read about Mary and Martha, it is Mary who was the first one to be in the presence of Jesus. But John goes out of the way to point out that in this case, it was Martha. When she heard that Jesus was coming, she went out to meet him, but Mary remained inside the house. John chapter 11 and verse 20. In the past, it was Martha who was doing the most cooking and hosting. But here we see a shift occurring in the life of Martha's thinking. And she gives greater priority to being in the presence of Jesus than she had in the past. I hope giving 
more priority to the presence of Jesus is something that's growing in your life. Yesterday, this room was filled with more than 100 people seeking to be in the presence of the Lord. The presence of Jesus changes the perspective, the things that we think about and how we view life. I invite you to move from where you are to where the presence of Jesus is being manifested. Uh, Sometimes people say, well, Jesus can reach me here. Have you ever thought about the importance of seeking where Jesus is manifesting and visit that manifestation to have an increased awareness of his presence? Pastor Margaret and I have traveled many places just to be in the presence where it's known that Jesus' glory is being manifested. When she reached Jesus, Martha said, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would have died, not have died. (laughs) Have you ever said something like that to Jesus? Lord, if you had, (laughs) we understand the feeling. But, she said, even now, I know that whatever you ask from God, God will give to you. What a tremendous statement. You know people who just seem to always get their requests answered? You want somebody to pray for you who's in touch and whose prayers are frequently answered. John chapter 11, verse 20 through 22. What a powerful statement. Martha knew that Jesus could have kept Lazarus alive. She was certain of that. She was certain that God heard and answered the prayers of Jesus. And I assure you, God is still answering prayers spoken in Jesus' name. I've never heard people from other religions speak in the name of their prophet or leader. You can speak in Jesus' name and do the things that Jesus did. Jesus' response was a powerful statement. The change that he saw in her about now seeking more after his presence, he gave her a powerful promise. Your brother will rise again. I'm not sure those words went in her from the conversation that ensued, but just think about what Jesus said. He meant what he said. Your brother will rise again. John chapter 11 and verse 23 Jesus had already raised the widow of Nain's son. He'd already raised Jairus' daughter. And Jesus wants us to believe that people can be raised from the dead when they die before their time. And that's part of the key. Uh, The devil rob, kill, and destroy. That's his plan. And we need to discern when a life has been stolen rather than when a life has fulfilled its God-given purpose. So Martha replied to Jesus by saying, I know my brother will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. That's a theological statement. John chapter 11, verse 23. And it's good to believe that theological statement. But Jesus had more than that for her. Jesus was more than theology. He was life. Martha did not realize she was just minutes away from seeing her brother raised to life again on that very afternoon. And Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live, and everyone who lives and believes in me shall never die. John chapter 11, verse 25 and 26, one of the great I am statements of the Bible. It's one of the greatest statements of the Bible. This is the first time in the history of the world that a promise like this has ever been made. Before Jesus was crucified, he clearly said, whoever believes in me will never die. Listen to it again. I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. And everyone who lives and believes in me shall never die. John chapter 11, verse 25 and 26. You might be hearing these words for the first time. This promise is for you. This promise is for everyone, Jesus said. Whoever believes, it might sound like it's good, too good to be true. But what if it is? Wouldn't you want to know that you have everlasting life? It means that we don't need to be afraid to die. 
It means that you can know you will go to heaven when you die. Jesus asked Martha a very, very important question. He asked her, do you believe what I just said, Martha? And Jesus is still asking that question. What is your reply? What is your reply? Your answer will determine whether you go to heaven or not. Martha replied, yes, Lord. I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, who has come into the world. John chapter 11 and verse 27. Martha understood that Jesus was the anointed one, the Messiah, the one the prophet spoke about. People who believe what Martha understood see that Jesus was more than a prophet. Martha received the promise of Jesus. John and Martha, John said to Martha, he went, she went, and she called her sister, saying to her privately, teacher, the teacher is here, and he is calling for you. And when she heard it, she arose quickly and went to him. And now, blessed Mary enjoys, joins the conversation with Martha and with Jesus. John chapter 11, verse 28 and 29. Again, I invite you to rise quickly and come to Jesus. Decide right now to come to Jesus and accept the promise he has made to give you eternal life. John tells us when Mary came to where Jesus was and saw him, she fell at his feet saying, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. John chapter 11 and verse 32. When Mary reached Jesus, she worshiped him. She fell at his feet, just like she did when she washed his feet with her hair. That Jesus received her worship tells us that Jesus was more than a prophet. He was, in fact, God in a human body. When Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who had come also weeping, he was deeply moved in his spirit and greatly troubled. John chapter 11, verse 32 and 33. Mary's worship tells us that Jesus was divine. Jesus' compassion tells us that he was also human. As a man, Jesus asked Mary, where have you laid him? And they said to him, Lord, come and see. Then these tender words, Jesus wept. John chapter 11, verse 34 and 35. If you've just lost a loved one, I assure you, Jesus is weeping with you. And when the Jews saw Jesus weeping, they said, see how he loved him. This is the human side of Jesus. But some of them said, could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man, remember the leaders in Jerusalem had seen him open that blind man's eyes and were now in Bethany investigating this story. Could he not have kept this man from dying? What a great question. It's a great question worthy of asking. If you're facing a deep crisis, I invite you to ask the same question that these people asked. Could not he, who opened the eyes of a blind man, have also kept this man from dying? If Jesus can raise the dead, surely God is with him, and he can do anything. And Jesus, deeply moved with compassion, visited the tomb where Lazarus had been laid. About 10 years ago, I too was deeply moved when I visited the tomb where Lazarus was laid and the church that was established to preserve the sacred site, to be in that place to worship God. Jesus said, take away the stone. John chapter 11 and verse 38. John tells us Martha protested because she was afraid of the odor that would come from the tomb since Lazarus had been dead for four days. But Jesus said these incredible words, did I not tell you? 
if you believed, you would see the glory of God. And so they took away the stone. John chapter 11, verse 40 and 41. Saints, the glory of God removes the odor of the pain that we experience in life. And once again, we see the faith of others opening the way for the tomb of a dead man to come back to life. Aren't you so glad for people who have faith in your place? Lazarus did not have faith. He would be raised. His friends exercised that faith. God is inviting you to exercise faith on behalf of others. They did what Jesus needed them to do. And Jesus lifted it up, his eyes to heaven, and he said, Father, I thank you that you heard me. I knew you always hear me, but I said this on account of the people standing around, that they may believe that you sent me. John chapter 11, verse 41 and 42. In his prayer, Jesus clearly gave the reason why Lazarus died before his time. And the purpose of his untimely death was to prove to the people that Jesus has the power to raise the dead. And after Jesus had said these things, he cried out with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. Old translation said, come forth. John chapter 11, verse 43. John reported that Lazarus came out with his hands and his feet bound with linen strips and his face was still wrapped with the burial cloth. And Jesus said to the people, unbind him and set him free. Let him go. John chapter 11, verse 44. What stone of unbelief has come between you and your miracle? What thoughts does God need to change in your mind for you to receive the life that he has promised? I unbind your unbelief and set you free to believe that Jesus can do what you think is impossible for him to do. You just lost a loved one. We break the power of the spirit of death off of this one. and We speak life over your painful situation. What does God want to resurrect in your life today? What hopes and dreams have you given up on that were so important to you in the past? What family circumstances have you faced that seem just impossible? Housing or transportation issues, retirement plans that are slipping away, health issues, you're losing your health, and you just want God to step into your life and help you, friends or family members in critical condition. Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead to prove that he has the power over death. You can trust Jesus to give you eternal life and a home in heaven forever. I invite you to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Ask him to forgive you for all of your sins that you've committed and give you the gift of eternal life. Father God, fill each one with your presence who just prayed with me. You just felt the presence of Jesus come upon you. Write to me and tell me about your decision to follow Jesus. Father God, thank you for new life and a promised home in heaven. Help us to experience your resurrection power in every area of our lives and to carry that blessed hope to other people this week. In Jesus' name, amen. We hope this message has filled you with living hope in Jesus. If you would like to talk to someone about your spiritual journey, please leave a comment or send us a private message. We enjoy reading your notes and having an opportunity to pray with you. If you received a blessing through this message, please share it with others. We invite you to become a Living Hope Partner by donating as little as a dollar a month through our QR code. Your gifts will help us create new messages and reach more people. Living Hope is a ministry of Ingleside International Incorporated. All donations for Living Hope qualify as a charitable contribution. Thank you for your prayers and support. Next week, we will continue learning together from the Word of God. God bless you.
and fill you with living hope.